in this video we're testing out LumaFusion on the desktop. Yes, you heard me right, LumaFusion on your MacBook Pro. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editors Keys. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you're into LumaFusion or video editing, because we have a ton of LumaFusion tutorials on this channel. Now, you heard me right in the intro there. We are testing out LumaFusion on a MacBook Pro. Now, this is the brand new 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is running the new Apple M1 chip, the new Apple Silicon. And because of that, you can now run iPad or iPhone apps directly on your MacBook Pro. Now LumaFusion of course haven't made a desktop version so this is literally just the iPad version running on the MacBook Pro but we're going to test it out. Can you use it? Is it still fast? Is it usable? Let's jump in and take a quick look. Okay so we're in LumaFusion on the MacBook Pro and I've just downloaded this from the App Store because we've purchased it already we can now use this. So just out of the bat, I have noticed um, a, a few little quirks. So it's not quite as easy as it is on the iPad to import footage because it's got kind of like the iPad uh, interface. If you go to files and then try and import a clip, it, it doesn't always link to a folder in the same way that it does on the iPad Pro. So what I've found is I can only really at the moment import footage if I go to files, I add a link to a folder, and then connect a folder first, it won't open any clips here. So what I then have to do is go to import media, go to files, and then select one clip at a time. Sometimes it will import two clips, uh, but most of the time I have to do a single clip at a time. So let's just import this clip here. And then if we go to our imported, you can see it's brought in these sort of six or seven clips here. So essentially let's load one up like you would normally do. Let's say we wanna pull this clip here. Whoops, I've just uh, double tapped that. Let's undo that. So let's click this so it goes into our right window. Uh, as you can see, the playback is nice and smooth and that's really good to see, really encouraging that the playback is lovely and smooth. So I'm just gonna create a mark in point. Let's go over here and create a mark out point. And then we are going to add this to the timeline, just into there. We're going to insert that there. So one thing I've noticed, if you're on the MacBook Pro and you're clicking around the timeline, the timeline kind of cursor doesn't move around to the position on the timeline. You do actually need to click and drag as if you're using your finger on a iPad Pro screen which, you know, it's not a hard thing to do, it's pretty good, but it just takes uh, a little while to get used to that. If you are used to using Final Cut or Premiere on your MacBook Pro, it just takes a little while to get used to actually clicking down and then dragging your clips left and right. So let's go into a clip and let's uh, try a little bit of color correction. So this is all 10-bit footage from the iPhone mini, and if you wanna see the review of that, you can click up in the corner. So I'm gonna double click this and let's go to our effects. Let's click original here. Okay. So it's actually kind of brought up the more of the iPhone interface. No, normally on LumaFusion, you'd have your window on the left here and your controls on the right. So it seems to have brought up the more vertical kind of space of the of the iPhone. But you know, we can adjust colors. That works fine and works really well. Again, I'm just color correcting iPhone footage here. This is the 10-bit uh, Dolby Vision. So as you can see, for the first time, we can actually color grade our footage. So I'm just gonna bring the vibrance up here. Let's just really saturate that. And that's looking good. So let's go back to our timeline. So now let's play that through. And you can see it's color corrected it really well. Now, I've noticed it is a little bit slow uh, when you go to play and pause your footage. So if I press uh, play by using the space bar, you see it takes a second, and if I press again, it still plays for almost a second before it will stop. If you use the on-screen controls, it's instant. So again, it's a bit more like you're using your iPad Pro than you're using a MacBook Pro at the minute. And then of course you can export, oh, I think that's because I'm in a beta test version at the moment, but we have used this earlier and you can export this. So let's go to files. We can export this as 4K, 30 frames a second. 
Uh, let's do that, let's export. And let's see how fast it does this. As you can see, it's actually running pretty well. It's actually about as fast as my iPad Pro for a, uh, a project of this length. There we go. And it actually lets you choose where you want to save that footage. So if you are on the desktop, you can then choose to save it on an external hard drive. We can hit save, and then we've got that edited movie from LumaFusion on the desktop, which is pretty cool. Now you can use two fingers to scroll along your timeline. So as I mentioned before, you can't click to go to a specific place in your timeline. You have to hold down and move left and right, or you can use two fingers to scroll left and right, which is the method I prefer. So that's pretty good. Let's see if we can add a title in here. Let's add this title here. Let's just drag that straight on and let's see how that plays through. There we go, and you can see playback in LumaFusion on the desktop is pretty smooth. Now, because this is the new version 2.4, you can of course edit in 10 bits. So you can see we've got, uh, let's choose 30 frames a second, 16 by nine. You can see here we've got our Rec. 709 10 bit, we've got HLG, and all of these work really well. This project here I've done is in Rec. 709, but you can see it works well, it works fast, and you know, I'm excited for the future of this, but I thought today it would be a bit of fun just showing you how this iPad app works on the desktop. So that's a quick look at LumaFusion on the MacBook Pro. So as you can see there, it does work and you can edit some videos. Now what I like is that if you own LumaFusion already on your iPhone or your iPad, you can now today, if you've got an M1 chip MacBook Pro, you can download it and start using it. The one thing you'll need to get your head around is that of course this is just an iPad app on the MacBook Pro. So you do need to use it as if you're using the iPad Pro version. And that means thinking about using your mouse like it's a finger on a screen for example so it does take some getting used to but it is working fine and as mentioned you know this isn't a full desktop version that LumaFusion have made this is just literally ported from the App Store so let me know in the comment section below what did you think are you going to use it would you like to see a full desktop version of LumaFusion in the future let me know and I'll see you in the next video